Part 6 is a look at the Toyota production system. As we begin to discuss the Toyota production system, let's point out a few interesting statistics about Toyota. In 2006, they had more money in the bank than GM, Ford, and Chrysler, and VW combined. Also, in 2006, they made more profits than GM, Ford, Chrysler, and VW combined. In 2009, they lost money for the first time in 55 years, but GM and Chrysler filed for bankruptcy and Ford struggled. Now, Toyota, as I record this right now, is having some problems related to a couple of recalls. But that aside, they've been working on eliminating waste and improving quality for over 50 years, and they believe they have a lot more to do. The roots of the Toyota production system and their quest for efficiency go back to the original Ford River Rouge plant. I mentioned that in Module 1. And according to Tom Johnson in his book Profit Beyond Measure, it was Mr. Toyota's view of the importance of the continuous flow with a fixed cycle time that was the secret of productivity. Ford and GM went a different direction themselves to handle variation. And they decided to go with offline operations, a strategy that hasn't paid off. The Toyota Way was a book written back in the 90s to illustrate and discuss the 14 management principles that Toyota embodied in their production system. Let's take a quick look at the Toyota Way principles. Number one is have a long-term philosophy. I think that parallels with the concept of policy deployment that we discussed a while back. Number two, bring problems to the surface. Number three, use pull to avoid overproduction, which is a basic concept of lean. Level out the workload, another lean practice. Have a culture of stopping to fix problems. That's probably one of the biggest differences between Toyota and many other companies. Number six, standardize tasks as a foundation for continuous improvement. Number seven, visual control. So we see one of the five S's is included right here. Number eight, use only reliable technology. Reliability hasn't been mentioned too much throughout this program, but it's really a fundamental underlying um, part of trying to improve quality and eliminate non-value added activity. Number nine, grow leaders who understand the work. And number 10, develop exceptional people in teams who follow the philosophy. So Toyota does spend a lot of time on training and development, encouraging people and appreciating them in training. Number 11 is respect your suppliers, challenge them to improve. There was some news story a while back about Toyota and their suppliers that might have seemed like a conflict with this. I'm not really sure what happened, but regardless, I think it's important to respect your suppliers. Number 12, go and see for yourself. Well, that's a good idea. And uh, I think right now, as I make this uh, presentation, there's a program that's showing on TV called Undercover Boss. And it reveals a lot of interesting things when the CEO of a company goes undercover and does some of the frontline work. Anyway, go and see for yourself is really a good idea. Number 13, make decisions slowly by consensus, consider all options, and then implement rapidly. Number 14, become a learning organization through relentless reflection and continuous improvement. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we mention Peter Senge again later on. Womack and Jones did a very famous study of Toyota and published their work. And here's a list of what they summarized as the five lean principles that they got from Toyota. 
you can see some of the same buzzwords here that we've been using already. Identifying value, the value stream, increasing flow, using pull, and pursuit of perfection. Here's a few final thoughts about the Toyota production system. First of all, it's more of a mindset, a philosophy, than it is a set of methods or tools. Toyota isn't devoted to any method or tool. They would get rid of any one of them if something better came along or if they decided that there was a better way to do something. They also played a place a lot of emphasis on appreciating employees and their contributions. Now, the American Automobile Company's upper management never really totally understood the Toyota production system. But of the big three, Ford understood it the most. This last slide has a link to some video clips about the Toyota production system and comparing it to the American Automobile Manufacturing Companies. It's not very long. I think there are two clips about five minutes each. Uh, this is suggested watching. In the activities section for this module, we'll probably ask you to look at it, but I've put it here for sake of completeness.